This is my shed in Environs in 2005. This place was abandoned in 1984 when the house burned down. The shed was fine, but my brother and I were the only ones that cared about it, and we had to go to college. So it just sat there for 20 years. I asked my uncle to let me help when he wanted to set a prescribed fire on this hill, but the decision to burn is entirely weather dependent. There just isn't time for somebody to drive down from Atlanta, so the shed caught fire a little bit. It is largely steel, though, so it only burned up the wood studs in one corner and ruined the wiring and some roof insulation. I had to take the corrugated panels off one door and dismantle the angle iron frame to prop up the damaged corner. The overhead wiring went from the shed to the well house. The metal building around the well tank was completely burned out, and the power distribution panel was ruined. It's a good lesson in metal buildings, though. The sheet metal is contributing a lot to the system, structurally speaking. Even with no framing, the well house stood there fine for a year or more. I had to back out all the stitch screws with my cordless impact driver to get the building apart. The pack rats had to move out. I dragged the metal panels around behind the old slab and piled it up next to the other burned up metal detritus from the house fire. A few months later, when I had an idea to use metal panels for a landscaping project and went to get some, I found a surprise cottonmouth moccasin. Sometimes I think about all the abandoned corrugated sheet metal in the world and wonder what percentage is hiding a snake. In the southwest corner of the shed, my dad had installed fiberglass insulation and particle board walls. I still used the pressure-treated 2x6 workbench that was mounted on the west wall and the heavy-duty table that holds my vise. There were some big particle board cabinets on the south wall that I removed with a shovel before I had lighting to take photos of it. But the most interesting thing in the shed was almost an entire high school gymnasium worth of maple flooring. The high school where my cousin's wife worked had a plumbing disaster one summer that flooded the gym. The floor buckled so they scooped up the whole thing with a forklift and dumped it on the side of the road. My cousin made multiple trips with a big flatbed trailer and collected it and stacked it with stickers in the shed. After it dried out, he built himself a 16-foot by 16-foot workshop with some of it, but there was still this much left. He said I could use some to build my house, so I only fixed the shed as much as necessary to get on to the house project. I pulled off the rake flashing and the pole and weatherhead for the defunct power. I got a new piece of rake flashing. Then I built my tiny house on weekends. I didn't get back to the shed until 2008. I got laid off from my job like everybody else that year. The first thing I did with my freedom was paint the shed. I bought a five gallon bucket of oops paint for $15 years ago, thinking I would paint the roof of the shed. But I kept missing the winter window of opportunity where it's not too hot, not too cold, but before the pine pollen drops. So I decided to use it to paint the wall where Ali Mo goes. Then I can put the trailer back and paint the rest of the shed next winter. But that paint has been sitting around a while. How am I gonna stir it up? I bought a stirring paddle back in the 90s without realizing I didn't have a tool that could turn it. But now I have one.
When I watched the first half of this wall in episode 3, I missed two spots, so I need to scrub those before I paint. This is a little black racer. It's periscoping. That's a hunting behavior. Racers eat mice, birds, frogs, and lizards. Despite their scientific name, Colubra constrictor, they don't squeeze their prey to death. They eat it alive. Periscoping is not very effective as a strategy against predators. Hawks definitely eat snakes like this. Racers only come out in the daytime though, so at least they lower their risk of being eaten by owls, possums, and bobcats. At night, they'll go in a stump hole or under the pine straw, if they can't find any corrugated metal. I usually like to paint out of this container that some nails came in, but uh, it's a little too small for this three and a half inch brush, so I can't really use this. So I'm going to use my big pail because it has a handle, which is which is important later. And then at the end of the day, if it's still paint in it when I'm too tired, I'm going to put the whole thing in here. Voila! So that's the plan. Let's see if we can get some paint out of here into there.
look at this rough green snake. And periscopes too. It is in the same family as the black racer. But these guys stay a lot smaller and they eat invertebrates like insects and spiders. I'm going to attempt to fix this bullet hole. This is extremely hard to bend. It's the use of aluminum. It's heavy gauge industrial steel. No play. I should have put my gloves on. This is why I always wear gloves and then I forgot to put them on and now I've cut myself. All right, now with gloves, I'm waiting for blood to come through this knuckle. Now I'm going to go on the inside with another washer and a nut and see if I can tighten this up without it falling out. I put mastic on here, not really to seal it, but just so it doesn't fall out of the hole. would like it tighter. Damn it, I got blood on my shed. Old skin, y'all. It's so thin and cut so easily. these parts we call this a white oak snake. They're active at night and are good climbers, as demonstrated by this one exploring the rain gutter and roof of my lab.
These snakes eat mice, lizards, frogs, and lots of eggs and baby birds. This one is probably hunting the squirrel tree frogs that like to warm their bellies on the aluminum. tell here close to the shed but it's become extremely smoky. I have to stop painting now because it's hard to breathe and you can get a long view. It's quite smoky. I can't complain because my neighbors have to breathe my smoke when I burn. So I have to breathe theirs when they burn but I can go in the house and work on something else. Hi, my name is Barbara. I'm a blank builder and a blogger, and I'm on a mission to rebuild and repurpose the 71-year-old aircraft construction aluminum trailer home, Alley Mo. Well, today is April 1st, 2020, March. What the hell? It's a pretty day for painting, so I'm going to get on that. My shed painting project got greatly delayed in March by smoke and hot weather and my niece decided to get married at my house. I had four days notice to empty my lab and my house. I kind of got out of order painting my shed. I wanted to have a time lapse of painting the whole thing and then a very satisfying next step and the next step, but I had to sort of skip ahead and trace uh, my design on the end of the shed before I finished painting the whole wall because I had to return the projector and laptop that I borrowed. So I'm going to finish today. I'm going to see if I can. Um, I'm feeling pretty good. But my back has really been killing me. Um, I figured out the secret though. Uh, caffeine. Lots and lots of caffeine. I do way better with lots and lots of caffeine.
Now that's done. I ran out of paint. I still need to paint the rake flashing. But uh, I'll do that. I can use a smaller brush, but I had to open up the whole five gallons and stir it up. And my brush was getting all gummies. No, you know what? Fuck it. I got light. I'm going to do this right now. I'm done. Look at how my paintbrush is the same colors as the old paint and the new paint. Cool. It's a corn snake. I love these guys. Of all the colubrids in my yard, this is the one most likely to go in the shed and eat mice. So if I had to pick a favorite, this is the one. Corn snakes are not strictly daytime snakes like black racers. I see them after dark a lot. Here's a flash photo of one I saw scoot into the shed as I was putting away my tools from working on my trench. Bon appétit, mon ami serpent. Bon appétit. Is this the same one? Nobody knows. Corn snakes are common in all of the sandy habitats of the southeast portion of America, including in South Florida where my brother lives. I got an email one time from Harry when his daughters were little that said, Can you find Kara's pet rat Tickle in this photo? Oh no! Poor Tickle! Poor Kara! Poor Harry! Harry said the corn snake came through a hole in the screen enclosure and got in the cage with Baby and Tickle, Brenna and Kara's pet rats. It ate Tickle and then couldn't fit out the hole anymore. Harry had to catch it and put it outside. That was about an 8-ounce snake that ate a 12-ounce rat. with a squash ball, a 35 year old squash ball on the end. I want to use as a mall stick, which is something painters use to hold their hand steady. Um, it used to have some masking tape fletching on it. So I'm going to cover that up. It's a little sticky. And I'm also going to try to make a holder for my paint cup. I saved this armature wire from my niece's uh, flower arrangements from her wedding. Let's see if I can reuse this. This foam came out of a um, boat seat cushion. The voices are the uh, tower workers on the cell phone tower across the road from me. It's so quiet out here and they're so high up that I can hear them from a half a mile away.
Now while I've been making my mall stick, it's gotten all fucking smoky. How am I supposed to work outside when it's smoky like this every day? Can't they take one day off from burning? I'm gonna do art today. Despite the smoke. Because of the pandemic, I haven't been able to go to Home Depot to buy a fresh quart of the high gloss black paint that I would prefer to use for this project. But I have this. A gallon of most of a gallon of their premium semi-gloss exterior house paint, which is a dark green color, I understand. Um, my friend that loaned me the projector uh, gave me this when I returned the projector. Uh, he put it outside and I swapped it for the projector and the laptop. So it's old. It was from the previous tenant. It was the color of his apartment that I painted over. So kind of scared but I'm gonna crack this open and see what it smells like I also haven't got any fresh paint sticks I think he keeps this by his dryer it's got lint all over it That is really cool. I don't think they used any of this. Okay, so here's my project. Now I want to address this smeary mess. I have a, in this plastic bag, a little piece of paper towel and dish soap. I'm going to see if I can kind of clean up this smeary place. The pencil smeared. Let's see what happens. This is just wet with water. I want to know if I can clean up pencil lines after the fact. Or if I'm going to have to paint over it. I saved out some paint in one of my little containers so that I can touch up the edges, but it'll leave brush marks that would not be there if I can wipe it off with soap. Not bad. That's a possibility anyway. I think I'll just wait and see how it goes and I'll clean that up at the end. Give it, let it dry a day and then I can come back in and, and uh, clean all these little places. Now one thing I need to remember, my glasses on. Oh uh, yeah, that's way better. <laughs> I have some paint brushes to choose from. This is one of my favorite brushes but it's a little wide for some of these spaces. And this one is maybe a little bit small. I don't know, this one might be good though. I like how stiff it is. It's not gonna put down much paint though. This is a brand new brush I've never used before. I just opened it. I'm not crazy about how the bristles are poking out. This one might be a little higher quality. I think I'll start small and work up. And I just paint. That's going to be hard to get coverage. I can get the edges pretty dark with this little brush. Maybe that's what I should do. Do the edges with this little brush. And then go back with another one. Good start. 
I've established a um, I've established that I want to all my little brush my fill-in brush strokes are going to go up and down so when I after I do the edges I have to fill in I, I'm going to try to make all my brush strokes go this direction so that when I do a second coat um, well it's just what I decided to do I don't really have a rationalization I just I hate random strokes everywhere so instead of random they're just going to be up and down I know a lot of people are scared of snakes, and some of them are scary. That moccasin at the beginning of this video, that was scary to me. And when I saw this baby eastern diamondback rattlesnake in my footpath, I got the telephoto lens. But did you know some people are afraid of baby birds? Too right, that's revolting.
all for the buck rivet report. Go buck yourself.